Um, I'm interested in the renewable energy target review that's being undertaken by Mr Dick Warburton and others um, that was initiated by the PM, I guess, late last year. And you'll be aware that I put a couple of questions to um, last time, I guess, yeah, you're both here. So the review that's currently being undertaken, is that required by legislation? Uh, Senator Brad Archer, head of the uh, Renewable Energy Target uh, Review Secretariat. Uh, Senator, the, the, the legislation that's currently in place uh, that requires a review to be undertaken uh, actually stipulates uh, that a review be undertaken by the end of 2014 by the Climate Change Authority. Yeah. Uh, so um, that is not the review that is currently underway uh, and chaired by uh, Mr Warden. Why did we need two? reviews into the same thing, one statutory and one completely made up? Senator, the government's uh, intention uh, as per legislation that it has introduced into the parliament is to abolish the Climate Change Authority. Uh, now that legislation has not, has not passed through the parliament at this stage, uh, but it is the government's intention uh, that there be one review undertaken this year on the renewable energy target. That is the one that's being chaired by Mr Warburton. Uh, and the government uh, intends, as I indicated, to, to abolish uh, the Climate Change Authority. Uh, the bill that's in the parliament to do that uh, does contain new provisions uh, in relation to reviews of the renewable energy target. The panel, Mr Warburton and his colleagues, have made it pretty clear that they won't be modelling any scenarios with a carbon price or any significant regulatory imposition on the energy market until 2030. Is this still the approach that the panel's taking or have they conceded that that's a completely implausible assumption? So Senator, that, there was uh, feedback provided uh, at a, uh, a workshop, uh, a stakeholder workshop that the, the panel convened uh, on the approach to the modelling that's being undertaken for the review. There was feedback? Uh, there, was, there was feedback provided at that workshop. Uh, some stakeholders held the view that it would be appropriate to include a scenario, a modelling scenario that incorporated uh, some form uh, of um, either carbon price or, or otherwise a proxy for yeah. uh, carbon reduction policy. Uh, the, the panel, uh, I think it would be fair to say that that's still under active consideration by the panel as to whether there is a modelling scenario uh, which incorporates such a price. So they haven't ruled out doing that, but nor have they started such a model? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Wow. Um, I guess in that same round of consultation, the panel has indicated that they would find it too difficult to analyse the benefits that clean energy bring to the network. So particularly rooftop solar, uh, solar in knocking the peak off or, or pushing a lower peak out to a little bit later in the day. Does the panel still hold the view um, that they won't be modelling the benefits of clean energy, only the costs? Uh, so I don't think that's quite uh, an accurate representation of what the panel is intending to do. Uh, so um, certainly uh, there will be electricity, the modelling exercise that's being undertaken is electricity market modelling, uh, and that will uh, identify uh, a range of potential impacts, impacts that the scheme is having uh, on the electricity market. Um, uh, I'm not uh, entirely sure exactly how far that will go, for example, into analysing the impacts on uh, uh, network expenditure. Um, but the, I would also add that the modelling exercise is only one input uh, to the panel's deliberations, uh, and the other two important components uh, uh, of, of the review uh, are the written submissions being received from stakeholders and also the face-to-face the -face consultation meetings uh, that the panel is holding um, uh, for the review. Uh, and so um, uh, that is certainly an opportunity that stakeholders have to present uh, their own evidence or their own information or their own arguments about the impacts uh, of the renewable energy target uh, on the electricity sector and, and, and in other ways as well. In terms of the written submissions in the face-to-face -face meeting, did you say, Mr Archer, you're on the Secretariat of the review? Senator, I, 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 yes, I lead the, the Secretariat for the review. So you've got visibility of the 
submissions. Have you attended any of the meetings that have been held? Uh, yes, I have attended several of the How consultation you, meetings. Thank you. How would you characterise the feedback you've got from the clean energy sector thus far to the review? So, uh, on the uh, consultation meetings, generally uh, the, the feedback that uh, I'm aware of uh, has indicated that um, stakeholders uh, have appreciated the um, opportunities that the panel have made available for them uh, to meet with the panel and to present their views. But would you describe their feedback at some of the attitudes that the panel members have brought to bear as, for example, <coughs> despair or horror? Or how, how would you characterise it? Do so they think I, the review's going in a good direction? Uh, so I, uh, I, haven't, um, I haven't personally uh, experienced uh, any feedback or been uh, advise of any feedback that would suggest uh, uh, that people are holding those feelings that you've, you've just described. I think you'd, you would need to talk to the stakeholders themselves. I do. Uh, well, then you, 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 would, you would know how they're feeling. Uh, but I, no one's come to me and said that, that that's how they're feeling about the review. Their feeling is though it may in fact be formal government policy to drive the renewable energy industry out of Australia or overseas, but maybe that's better. Put to Senator Abetz. Is it Australian government policy to close renewable energy down in Australia no. and drive that capital overseas? No, and it's, uh, so it's, know, it's uh, not uh, policy. Uh, it's a sort of suggestion we expect to hear uh, from uh, you and your party, Senator. But, uh, no. Well, you've given me a very clear answer. It's not Australian government policy to drive renewable energy overseas. Are you worried then that an inadvertent consequence of all the things that you're doing is that that is precisely what's occurring? Well, I don't agree with uh, that assertion. You don't. You're not paying attention to what's happening in energy markets at the moment. The industry is at a standstill. Nobody's interested in investing in direct action uh, in this review that's being undertaken by a climate denier. Although certain Senator Bernard, yeah, okay. Well, I think it's. I think it's really wrong to refer to people as climate deniers. I know it's that a that pejorative slur. Bernard. It's um, a disgrace. I know it's targeted at me. I'm quite proud of no, my scepticism of all the alarmism that you've peddled for many years. But still, if you want to have a crack at me, have a crack at me privately. Senator I'm Lundin. sorry I hurt your feelings, Senator Bernard. You haven't hurt my feelings. Absolutely I just, not uh, yeah, I, think, I think it is really an inappropriate term. Denier uh, and denial is linked to one of the most grotesque periods in human history. And I think there's, there's a deliberate slur that's attached no. to it. Not at all, but you're the chair. Um, nobody believes that this review is being conducted to do anything except scale back the renewable energy target. Is that feedback that you're getting from the sector? Uh, no, Senator. It's not. And you've read the submissions and you've attended the meetings? Correct. Um, so Bloomberg New Energy Finance yesterday released their analysis that keeping the renewable energy target effectively as it is, as gigawatt hours target over a fixed period of time would drive $35 billion of investment in clean energy by the year 2020 and employ 25,000 workers each year in construction and operations. Does the panel agree with that modelling? It, does it access that kind of information? Uh, so uh, I think that is very recent information. I am yeah. aware that that was, that was released. Um, so, Senator, as we've discussed, there is modelling that the panel has commissioned that's being undertaken for the review. Yeah. Uh, but I think that uh, it would be reasonable uh, to uh, infer that the panel would also take account of other information that is being made available uh, about the impacts of the renewable energy target. Uh, the, the Bloomberg New Energy Finance material is not the only material uh, that's being... Um, I guess, uh, put out there in a sense on, yep. on the different impacts of the renewable energy target. And I think, um, again, I think it would be reasonable uh, to infer that the panel, uh, when considering its own modelling results, uh, will look at how they compare with other evidence that's being put forward. All right. So the conducting their own modelling doesn't mean they're blind to what the industry is saying or what other analysts are saying? That's correct, yep. Senator. Okay. Um, does the review considering the employment benefits of maintaining or extending the renewable energy target, in particular the degree to which investment in renewable energy generates roughly three times the employment per megawatt hour generated as fossil fuel technology. So, Senator, the terms of reference do require uh, the panel to look at a range of potential impacts uh, of the scheme, and I think uh, certainly impacts on employment in the economy uh, would fall within, within the panel's terms of reference. Okay. 
The Australian Solar Council estimates that if the renewable energy target gets abolished, then 81% of solar firms will cut staff and up to 12,600 jobs in that industry could go. That's not a recent estimate, it's not as recent as the Bloomberg staff. Are you aware that that's the magnitude of what's at stake if the review finds adversely? Well, Senator, I think uh, the panel will consider uh, all the information that's put forward that, that um, it considers is substantive information that's relevant to formulating recommendations about the review, including the information put forward by the Australian Solar Council. Okay. I wonder whether I could table for your feedback by leave of the, the chair and the members of the committee um, a costed initiative that we released during the uh, WA by-election campaign that shows the cost to go 100% renewable energy in Western Australia. It's on a southwest interconnected system which is not connected to the NEM. By the year 2029 is now cheaper than business as usual. And can I get your feedback on whether you and or the panel concur with that modelling? Uh, I think I would have to take that on notice. Senator. Yep. No, I'm, just, I'm not expecting you to give me an evaluation now, but I'll just table that for the well, benefit of the witness. Well, the committee will have to consider it and then um, uh, yep. give permission to table it. Yep, so I'm happy for the secretary to receive it in the first instance and give it to me. Yep. Thank you. All right, so we'll just leave, leave that for the moment. Um, could you outline the process for us in which ASIL Allen was awarded the contract to do the modelling for the government's RET review, given that it seems to be, as you've identified, the modelling, the written submissions, the face-to-face -face meetings are kind of the three pillars on which the review stands. Who let ASIL Allen into the room? How did that come about? Oh, sorry, could you just repeat that last bit of the question, Senator? How, uh, was it tendered, for example? I want to know the process by which that particular consultancy was engaged. Certainly, Senator, contract. it was a, an open uh, tender process yep. uh, undertaken uh, in accordance with government procurement guidelines. Okay. I'm um, just aware that we're probably running short of time. Could you just table for us or take on notice just the details of timing around, you know, the kind of process for putting that out to tender and the selection process? How many companies entered that tender? Uh, uh, so... My recollection uh, is that there were nine, but I, I would certainly like to take that on notice That's to ensure right. I'm not mistaken. But of that order? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, has the RET review hired a consultant with any expertise at all on renewable energy? And the, re the reason I put this to you is ACEL Allen is obviously very, very well credentialed in terms of modelling for fossil fuel companies. They're analysts for the coal industry, for example, so they're their record in, in evaluating fossil energy is unimpeachable. Do they know anything at all about renewable energy and did anybody, is anybody with expertise in the renewable energy industry um, providing input into that modelling? So Senator, we've um, only engaged ASIL Allen, but that, that's on the basis uh, that uh, they were found to be uh, to have submitted the, uh, the best uh, proposal in response to the request for the electricity market modelling work. Was it the cheapest? We required uh, to be undertaken. Yeah. Uh, no. It wasn't the cheapest. Uh, but that reflects the fact that the process requires a value for money assessment in determining the, the successful dollars. tenderer. It's not exclusively about price and there are a range of considerations that All were right. taken into account. Were those considerations of the criteria put to them, were they put into the public domain at the time they must have been, at the time that tender was sought? Yes, so that was part of the tender documentation that was put up on Tender, which yep. is the conventional way of, of conducting a public tender process. Okay. Did your evaluation include whether or not they had any expertise at all in renewable energy, in the renewable energy industry? Senator, we, we uh, needed to be satisfied that uh, the successful proponent could, could undertake robust electricity market modelling, which includes modelling uh, renewable energy generation and its impacts uh, across the sector. Uh, so that was certainly taken into account. Was it taken into account that the coal industry is effectively being, potentially being outcompeted? by renewable energy technology. So you give it to a coal industry consultancy, does it worry you that they might find tilt or kink their models in favour of, of black power generators? 
So, Senator, it, it, it's sort of the premise of your question is that they're you a, a fossil going. fuel based consultancy. Well, but, they are. Uh, ASIL Allen have undertaken uh, other work, uh, including for the Australian government, uh, which has been electricity market modelling based work. Uh, that's the basis on which, uh, or certainly a significant uh, element of our assessment of their uh, capability to undertake uh, the work for this review. All right, the last thing, I'm getting the wind up from the chair. Was that material suitable for tabling? Oh, the committee will have to consider it. We'll Senator. come back to it in the break. Uh, we may do. All right. Um, so just finally, and maybe on notice if we're getting short of time, um, could you outline for us the sitting fees for the chairman and for the members of the expert panel? Certainly, the, the sitting fee for the chair of the panel is $1,500 per day. Per day? Uh, or part thereof, uh, depending on the hours devoted to the business of the review, yep. uh, and the figure for uh, other panel members is $1,400 per day. Okay. And again, all part thereof. All right. How many sitting days have they had? Thanks, Senator Bernardi. Um, maybe these on notice. How many sitting days have they had to date, and what's the total amount of money that's been expended to date on the RET review and your total allallocation to get that project? Uh, happy to take those on notice, Senator. Yeah, if you could. Thank you, Senator Ludlam.